World Cup makes its only appearance in Dunedin today and the Carisbrook ground plays host to the unbeaten New Zealand team as they take on India. The pitch has been quite good here this season, although even by New Zealand standards just a little on the slow side and we'll have more on the pitch for you in just a moment. Hello from Dunedin, it's a fine day but it's a little on the chilly side and as we go into this match between New Zealand and India, let's just check out the points table to show you how important this game is for the Indian team. New Zealand have already qualified for the semi-finals with that unbeaten record but there we have India with uh, a two win and three loss record and at one point they got from their no result against Sri Lanka could at the end be very vital for them if they hope to get to the semi-finals. So for India playing their seventh match out of eight in the preliminary round a win today absolutely important absolutely vital if they're going to uh, get to the last four of the Spencer and Hedges World Cup. Well let's check on the condition of the Carisbrook pitch now as we go out to the middle and join John Morrison and Peter Sharp. Looking at the pitch, Peter, it looks similar to the one we had for the New Zealand-England game, sh perhaps a shade damper. Now that was the strip though, the New Zealand-England game, where the world discovered Rod Latham as an international bowler. <laughs> they certainly did. And of course Harris and Larson and that pattern developed out of here, so it did good things for New Zealand and we'll sit, I, I'm sure we'll see the same things again. Well, let's just have a look on it. it the, the pitch here that we're using for this match is the one directly beside the strip that was really a bit disappointing for the England match against New Zealand. When in both them said with a bit of a joke, but uh, wasn't too far away that the ball when it landed actually ran backwards. Yes, well it was very slow and it was very dead and the ball just didn't have any carry. But this one's got a little more binding. It hasn't got that uh, drier look with the cracks. That one moved a little and you see there's very little uh, sign of cracks here. Good solar grass, but it's dead. There's no greenness about it, just a slight tinge. So I think there'll be a little more carry on this one. Maybe it'll get slower as the day goes on. He's got a bit more moisture in it, John. We took out the plug that is where the stump vision camera it gets located just at the bowler's end and you can see there that if I dig my thumbnail into it it actually comes through quite clearly so there is some moisture there the binding is there the clay is good and we know that this clay is very good for a good cricket strip because the tracks that we had last year here were really fantastic weren't they yes and it should be a fair contest for both parties uh, whether you battle bowl first but I imagine because of the overhead conditions the side winning the toss will have a bat because of these new rules we've got they certainly will. I think that's very, very likely indeed. And the strip then should be a good, uh, if a little bit slow, and that might favour the New Zealand batting because the New Zealand batting has done so wonderfully well during this series and we're looking forward to seeing them do just that again today. So it looks like a pretty good batting surface out there, but it's very cold in Dunedin today and uh, with the threat of rain around, I wonder what the captain who wins the toss is going to do. Mohamed Azaruddin and Martin Crow are out in the middle now and they're joined by our man Keith Quinn. Okay, Mohammed Azruddin, you've won the toss here this morning. Uh, what are you going to do? Are we going to bat? You happy with the batting conditions, obviously? Uh, yeah, I mean, it looks a bit dicey, the wicket. I don't know how it's going to play later on. But uh, I think it's always best to bat on a wicket when you don't know what's going to happen later on. What do you think of the weather conditions here? Is that uh, a bit cool? A bit cool, yeah. It's like playing in Derby. <laughs> playing in Derby. And who's in your team today? Who's not playing today? Uh, Ravi, Amre and Kamre not playing. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, Good luck. Thank you, thank you very luck. much. Martin Crow's here. Martin, are uh, you happy with that? Uh, you'll be in the field first. Yeah, we, we were going to bat actually, but uh, we'll get out here and experience the cold first. Yeah, it is a bit cool, isn't it? Yeah, and we're going to leave Wrighty and uh, Murphy Sewer and Danny Morrison uh, warming in the, in the changing room. Making the tea. OK, Martin, play well. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks Thank you. Right, let's confirm the Indian team they're batting first. Shrikanth and uh, Jadija to uh, go in first. Azruddin, Tendulkar, Mandraka and Kapil Dev to complete the first six. India have left out a batsman today with both uh, Kambli and Amre not playing. Moray's the keeper. Prabhaka and then Banerjee comes into the side. He's another pace bowler. Trinath is there as well and Raju the left arm spinner to complete their side. John Wright's still out of the New Zealand team. So great batch and Latham in first. Jones, Crow, Rutherford, Harris, Cairns back in the side. Patel, Smith, Larson and Willie Watson to complete the lineup. So no Danny Morrison in the New Zealand team today. Chris Cairns has the new ball for New Zealand. He's opening the bowling today again with Deepak Patel and opening the batting for India, Chris Shrikanth and AJ Jadija. Let's go to the action at Carisbrook, New Zealand against India. Chris Cairns to bowl the first ball of this very important match for India. And it's a full toss, a big appeal. Well, Cairns demanding it, Sir Richard Hadley. What a dramatic start that might have been. Well, we've seen the dramatic starts in one or two other matches before, but here we have Chris Cairns getting into his work. Full toss. Well, it may have mislegged, then again, it just may have hit it. Difficult decision to make first ball of a match, isn't it? Here's Shrikant going over the top, and Rod Latham's waiting for it, and makes the catch, Rod Latham. Shrikant out in the second over, and New Zealand made 
a dramatic breakthrough. India are four for one, and we're still in the second over. Well, I guess Srikanth's been forced into this move, and he's been one of the only batsmen in the whole competition to really have a go at Patel. He did the, I think the uh, the effort was probably right, but he just hit it probably too well and too straight, and Latham takes a pretty good catch, a simple one, in fact. Well, he certainly didn't have to run for it. It was hit directly to him, and so the move of using Deepak Patel at the start paid off again. Srikanth going, India are four for one. Azradun getting his first run, and Watson fielding well. The first over comes to an end from Deepak Patel. Two overs gone now, and it's six for one. Patel. Oh, good looking shot. No need to run for that. That's four. Just over pitching a little wide, and Azradun, class player, puts it away. Yes, I get the impression that the Indians don't really want to let Patel bowl, as he's been allowed to bowl at Eden Park to other sides. This one full and drifting wider. And certainly a class shot there through the offside. Oh, he's gone over the top. He's got hold of it. Not that well, but he's cleared the field. And it was a bit of a chip shot, really. Just got over mid on. Two runs, and that's the end of the over. 20 for one, India. Down the wicket. Oh! Slick outside edge and that man in that square gully position leaping high but just can't quite drag it down. Yes, well, Paddy Batch is certainly not there for that one. It was uh, attempted to be launched over the top. Tried to hit it over long off because there is a long on back. It flew off the outside edge and put down, well, <laughs> half chance for Paddy Batch with the total at 22 for one from eight overs. We see here that uh, Jadija has done a hamstring and does not look good no he looks very lame doesn't he so that's uh, bad luck for india obviously leaving the park here and i think he'll struggle to uh, resume his innings at any stage and that is a shame for india so ten dolker will obviously come out to replace jody jar and ten dolker off the mark a little inside edge, he'll come back for the second, comfortable enough. Ooh, just uh, nips that one down the leg side and that's four, that'll run away, well played. Just straying a little Chris Cairns and Azarudin able to catch up with it. Patel to bowl the 12th over. Oh, oh he's bowled it well too. Tendalka heading firmly down Beach Crow. Tendalka coming back for the third. So it was well struck. Crow, I think he thought that he probably had it covered. As it's in the air and dropped. Once again, the ball hit firmly. That's three times today. The ball's been hit in the air, been hit close to but not directly to a fielder and it's been put down yes uh, good delivery that fan and uh, tendulkar head high in the air drove it officially uh, at short cover where latham disappointingly dropped that one well there was an example of a shot that went very aerially initially but he managed to get it square of third man and hit it so hard that it defeated third man coming around. Well, you can see that there wasn't really too much room there, Glenn, because the ball was pitched on about off stump coming in. But he did it really well, Tindalka. Gave himself enough room to free his arms and hit the ball. It's a lovely shot from Ezra Din, straight through extra cover. That's the best shot of the day. Yes, it is. Even though that offside field is quite packed, there isn't actually a sweeper out square. And he had enough width there. He just stood where he was, wound the bat through the line of the ball and just hit it to the left hand of extra cover. Well, it wasn't over tossed either. He just had to transfer his weight back. That's a big shot. A very big shot indeed from Tim Dalker. One bounce, four over extra cover.
Yes, it looks as though Tendulka has decided things aren't going well enough. And that's a magnificent stroke. He got inside it and hit it inside out over, over cover. See the angle of the bat there opening up the blade. Even though the delivery was almost on off stump, he did very well indeed to get it there. That's pretty wide too, and that's too wide, and that has enough room for Tendalka just to thrash the ball through point. And good quick single here. They'll get through very comfortably. Yes, a lot resting on these two, Kamara. And there's the 100 up for India. A good performance. Azaruddin, the skipper, guiding the ship through. He's on 36. Tendalka at the other end on 46. And the 100 up. So, Tendalka, 49. And there's his 50. Good knock by young Tendalka. He came out when India seemed in trouble. They'd only lost one wicket, but they had lost Jadija with the hamstring problem. And he's helped his skipper, Azaruddin, through to a very respectable 107 for one after 28 overs. And in the air, cutting away. That'll be four. Good shot by Tendalka. Given a little bit of room, he's cut it. It's gone over the infield and into the boundary for four. That's a crashing shot through extra cover. And great batch is never going to get to that. And that's six. It's over the top. And just clearing the fence. Azradeen reaching his 50 now. Three fours and a six in that, 97 deliveries. And this is what India will be doing, quickening the pace. Could be out. He's taken it. Mark Great Batch. A brilliant catch again. And Azradeen, after reaching 55, deciding to have a go at Patel in his last over. Nine runs coming from it already. And Mark Grabatch has taken a very good low diving catch on the wide mid-on boundary. Very wide mid-on boundary. Glenn. Yes, well, he's charging, and it was a full toss. And you watch it juggle here from Great Batch. Did he catch it? He got under it, and then it's as though he hugged it under there, and he came up with the ball and claimed the fact that he caught it. See how he hugged it in against his body there. The umpires looked to go together to talk about it, but Azaruddin was quite happy and was walking off the park, so that was not necessary. So India's second wicket down with a total at 149 and the 37th. And this is over mid-off. It'll probably go all the way. It does. Willie Watson trying to get back there. Tendulkar seeing where the gap in the field was, charging. Oh, Harris yeah. ball and appeal for catch at the wicket. The wicket's been taken. Tendok is gone. Harris has got him. And India have lost their most exciting batsman. Tendolka caught Smith, bowled Harris for 84. It's 167 for three in the 42nd over. And Tendolka, it's very wide again. Actually, a poor delivery. Tendolka, given the width he wanted, and just a little top edge, fine enough not to deviate too much for Smith. And Tendulkar, the hero of the Indian in innings to date, is dismissed. And now India 167 for three. Kapildev has a couple of runs. And he might be out now. It's in the air. Rutherford's waiting for him. He misjudged it completely. The wind just took it away from him at the last moment. It went up in the air, probably got into the area above the stand and swirled a bit. And it just pushed it directly away from him. Well, if we watch this, it's a leading edge that just goes up behind point. The wind here amazingly just blew it miles away from Rutherford, and he was quite bewildered at that. But when we saw it live, it was very noticeable indeed that the Southerly or Southwester interfered with that one. And Kapildev just whips that one around the corner and hits it very well indeed and picks up four runs. Well, Kapil Dev is a wonderful striker of the ball once he gets in and uh, tends to play that shot quite a lot, particularly uh, at the death of the last few overs of an innings. Even in test matches, he tends to hoik it a bit round there, but 
He can hit the ball beautifully straight too. I tend to think a lot of them are going to go in that area on the onside. Yes, he picked that up superbly. And he goes again, and my word, that's through the extra cover. Field and away for four more. And Kapaldev middling that one beautifully. Well, it's always nice to have a player like Kapal coming in at this stage of the innings, isn't it, when he can hit both sides of the wicket. As I say, he <laughs> tends to go a little bit leg side, but that really uh, was a magnificent off-drive. And, oh, that's an interesting shot, and he's going to get four more. Well, it was a bit shorter, but he was on the front foot, and he got hold of it rather well, and no one's out there at mid-wicket. Four more. <laughs> well, I think he was going to try and do something rather innovative there, and in the end, well, they're coming back for two. Kapil Dev having to hurry, but he gets home. I think the original idea was to give Kapil Dev the strike, but they realised there was two there, so take them if they're there. Yes, well, this stage of the innings, you run for anything and everything. Yes, I think he was looking to perhaps play what is called a reverse yeah, lap, but he changed his mind it, in the last they? second there and pushed it through the offside. Well, it's not a major problem or disaster for India, but um, Mandraker, I think, just stopped his shot there. The ball might have just held up a little bit and just pushed it straight back. Simple catch. That's 201 for four. And over the top goes Kapil Dev. He could be out. He may not be. He isn't. One well, bounce into the boundary down there. Actually, it's Banerjee there. Banerjee, yes, uh, I... <laughs> unfair on Banerjee but his, his intentions are quite clear he's taken one ball to settle down and then he's had a two and a four in the next two deliveries and so really he's striking what uh, or the same as Kapil uh, has been doing so this is good batting for India yes Banerjee hit that rather well hands down there but he didn't have a chance Banerjee and he bounces that over the head of Chris Harris it's got more carry than it looked initially and he gets two more, so his arrival at the wicket has been fruitful for India. Into the over, 209 for four. Oh, slower ball, perhaps uh, an appeal from Willie Watson. They get through for a single, leg by signalled. Well, the New Zealand bowlers look to be quite interested in that. It has been a, a leg by. Perhaps going oh, down, certainly there. going down the leg stump. Yeah. Uh, Peter McConnell there, the Australian umpire, getting it absolutely right. Even the signal for a leg by was right. That's a big hit, and that's going to find the gap between extra cover and mid-off. That's a magnificent blow from Kapil Dev. That's what India need. Yes, so India at last perhaps having a little bit of luck, which they deserve in this competition. Kapil, such a good striker of the ball. Had that early luck, and he's just smashed this over extra cover. So Harris has three balls left in this over. And that's one of them, and that's going to go in another gap behind point. But the bowling is wide. It's allowing him to free his arms. He's not having to improvise much. And just watch the line of this. It's plenty of width out there, so he just smashes through the line of it. And it's always likely to go on a shortish side there for four and defeat the only fielder out there. Harris has gone for nine in this over. And that's a big hit. That's going to be caught. Is it Latham underneath it? Is it Larson? It's Larson makes the catch. That's a big blow for New Zealand. Harris has his third wicket. And Kapildev is out. Caught Larson. Bowled by Harris for 33. It's 222 for four. Yes, well, he could have hit it on the offside and played a similar shot. Because it was a fraction shorter, he decided to go onside and fetch it and was not able to quite get it over Larson there, who took a very good catch. So the Indians now 2.22 for five. Now, this is the last over of the Indian innings. 2.23 for five. Banerjee swings through mid-wicket and is caught. catch by Mark Greatbatch and Banerjee's out caught by Greatbatch by Watson for 11 in the last over it's 223 for 6 yeah, 
Yes, Banerjee looking to pick the ball up onside here, which he's entitled to do, and didn't really get enough on it. And we saw Great Batch taking a good catch this time, and he decides to catch it in his hands rather than under his armpit. <laughs> a reference to a previous catch, which was nearly misjudged to the extent of disaster. But the young guns certainly are firing out here. They've come back into it pretty well. It looked as if they were drifting away as, uh, who's that, um, Srinath coming out? Uh, Prabhaka, or it could be Srinath. We just watched the dismissal again as Great Batch manages to tumble over with it, and he's obviously delighted, and Willie Watson, thank you very much. But the Indians now up to 223 on Carisbrook, and that's not a bad total. Did he, in fact, have it cleanly in his hands, or was he fumbling around with it? It's Karen Moray now on strike. <laughs> Watson bowls a slower and a fuller delivery. Moray gets his first run. 2.24 for six. Nicely judged there in the end by both bowler and batsman. Much, much slower one, very full in length. And there we have it. Prabhaka is the new man. And a number of medium scores there, although Tendolka does tend to stand out with his 84. I think that's true enough, Glenn. Third man having come up inside the circle, so that edge down there has gone for three. Yes, I think you're right, it's uh, on our scoreboard. Uh, we, we had it as Prabhaka, but I think it is Srinath. So Srinath and Moray have the responsibility of the last over. Three balls are left. Moray plays a little table tennis shot. Right up into his face. I would suggest that that's hit him in the visor. He walked across far too early in the ought to have. He gave it away to the bowler as to where he was going to go. And look at that, straight up under his chin. Two balls left. Now hitting firmly straight to Latham though and so we're coming up to the last ball India winning the toss batting first on Carisbrook the pitch has been good the outfield has played quickly and while they've got a competitive total they might not quite have enough we'll soon see this is the last ball Moray flicks it from his pads whips and might hit does he? No they get a leg by and so the innings is over. So in 50 overs, 230 for six, the Indians score with the best partnership that between Azruddin and Tendulkar. They made a slow start but recovered well with Kapil Dev hitting out boldly for 33 from 22 deliveries. Srinath and Moray uh, were not out at the end, 230 for six. Let's look at the New Zealand bowling figures and Deepak Patel did a marvellous job again. Two for 29 from his 10 overs and uh, he shared the new ball. Willie Watson also bowled well, one for 34. Chris Harris a little expensive, but he came back well towards the end to take three wickets, three for 55 from his nine overs. So India setting New Zealand the target of 231 to win. Mark Greatbatch going in first for New Zealand again today with Rod Latham. So the left hand, right hand opening batting combination. And with the new balls for India, Kapil Dev and Manoj Prabhaka. And up it goes in the air. He's got it clear of the field. Just very high that one down to long on. He wants to come back for three, Mark Greatbatch and uh, decides against it probably rather wisely. So New Zealand underway, Mark Greypatch very much in the fashion that we've come to know him in recent weeks. Down the wicket goes Greypatch and thumps it over the extra cover field and into the boundary for four. Well, we've seen a bit of that in the last week or so and he's continued. Oh, up he goes, Mark Greatbatch, he's hit this one well. It's got, it was so high that it hasn't got much carry on it. But it's another very comfortable two. Well, that's exciting stuff for the crowd here at Carisbrook. And he's just uh, guided this one wide of Moray. And a dive there. 
but four more. So that's set the Carisbrook crowd alight. So things underway for New Zealand. And bang, this one goes up in the air. Where's it going to land? Actually, the fieldsman there miscited uh, it completely. Who's that? That looks like... That's Ma Mandraka. Uh, yes, Mandraka. He didn't realise where the ball was for a moment, and he didn't move. Well, it looked to me when it was going over Mandraka as if it was going into the stand. And I think Mandraka thought the same thing, but it must have got it up into that wind. The wind is still very strong, and it blew it back. Yes, it hung up. In fact, it went out of sight as far as we were concerned. We were up in the back of the rose stand, and it went above the level of the rose stand, the roof. And so we didn't know where it was going to come down. But this time, that's a lovely shot. Well, that answers the critics, doesn't it? Stands up, bangs it into the covers off the back foot. Lovely shot. Keppel Dev, bowling to Mark Greatbatch. Ooh, slower ball, and there could be a mix-up here. Great batch. Well, he got a bit tangled up there and he was sent back by Rod Latham and the Indians I don't think were very happy with Great Batch getting in the road of it let's have another look well look at this because Shrikant came in very quickly indeed and he made a complete miss but oh, I see he, he ran in front he it. did run in front <laughs> well he had to because he had to turn straight around and run straight back he's yeah, entitled to do that he is very cunning trick oh he short arm jabbed this one square of the wicket on the onside six runs well, he just literally flicked his wrists and into the new stand it went. Six runs. 27 for no wicket. And Mark Greatbatch looking like he wanted to get after Krabak and he's got runs here. It's gone fine. There's no fine leg because they're trying to defend the boundaries and they'll come back for three. Well, that was very good play from Great Batch and very good running from Latham. Oh, that's Latham gone. Prabhaka strikes first for India and Latham's been bowled for eight. It's 36 for one now, leaving Great Batch 26 not out. Obvious frustration here from Latham. Tries to hit. He hits right across it to try and hit it over mid-wicket. And if you do that, you've got to get your pad closer to it and go through with it. He didn't uh, achieve that, and so New Zealand's first wicket falls after seven overs, 36 for one. So Jones gets his first run, and his second. It's 39 for one now, nine overs have been completed. It's a lovely shot again from Great Batch. He's found the side boundary again. And one bounce into the hoardings. A little bit short. We haven't seen a big shot for a while from Great Batch. It was due. Yes, it wasn't a pickup either. It was just short of a length. And look how he cocks his leg up as he just <laughs> fetches it. Instead of going square or behind square, it goes more towards mid-wicket. One bounce into the fence. Great batch waiting for it well. He looked for two here. With Tindoga coming in from the fine leg boundary. Oh, it's a bad misfield by Raju. And that'll give him six. Two runs taken. Four for the overthrows. Six runs. And he goes again. This is high in the air. It's six runs. Oh, cool. Robinson says six, and the crowd love it here at Carisbrook. Well, Richard, good entertaining stuff, isn't well, it? Well, it's quite an unbelievable batting display, isn't it? Mark uh, Great Batch, he's really gone from one extreme to the other. For somebody who couldn't hit the ball off the square, perhaps at the beginning of the season, now has really hit the ball two and over the boundary all too frequently, and uh, that is not a problem for New Zealand, is it? And, uh, very good on the leg side and his pickups. He is super uh, stuff. He's been very, very positive. I just wonder how long it can keep going for. Great batch hits Keppel Dev way down the ground. That won't be six. In fact, it struggles over the boundary in the end because it pitched and stopped a little. But four more. 
And that's the end of the over. Another very fruitful one. 63 for one, New Zealand. And Mark Greatbatch, there's his 50. Wonderful 50 from Mark Greatbatch. He's coming back for the second, so he's on to 51. But the crowd here at Karras Block giving Mark Greatbatch a wonderful hand for what has been a very entertaining 50. Good shot. Straight down the ground. And this should run away. It's just keeping on going. And it has. Well, that was well played. It was timed. And it beat mid on. And he goes this time. This is high in the air. He's got the court. Mandraker underneath it. He He's dropped, dropped it. it. Oh, well, well. Goodness me. It was up there for seemingly an age. Mandraker underneath it. He waited and waited. The wind caught it a little bit. And in the end, he hardly got a hand to it. Well, that's a top edge, and it went a long, long way. Probably got snow on it, mystery, but Mandrake, as you say, had to wait, and that wind just might have taken it away from him. It was either poorly judged, or the atmospheric conditions up there had a lot to do with it. Nice shot by Andrew Jones. Nobody out and long on, that's four. Well hit. He's done it again this time through the offsides. Lovely shot. Just enough way on. Consecutive fours. Banerjee is hit for six. And yes, this is the single that will bring up the 100 for New Zealand. Great batch pushing it just out beyond the bowler. Nobody in there at mid-off. So the New Zealand 100 up in the 20th over. Remember, their target is 231. This could go all the way. No, Raju is going to get round there. It's a Srinath, in fact. The end of the over, 20 gone now. And New Zealand, 102 for one. me mark great batch has just swung this one high wide and handsome and it's just dropped inside the boundary that gained incredible height but uh, not quite the distance for six and andrew jones into the act this time hitting it away down to long leg oh misfield down there and the indians getting a bit sloppy certainly it's very very cold but the end of the day, you've got to do the job. And he's gone for the big hit. He could be caught. He is caught. Mark Greatbatch is out. He tried to swing Raju away over the fence at mid-wicket. He didn't quite hit it as well as he might. And he is gone. Showing frustration there after such a fine knock. Just a pity to be strangled by that one. I think he tries to get it square here. In fact, no, he tried to get it behind square. The man is in front out there at a deepish mid-wicket and hit it straight down his throat. That's Banerjee. And so after a marvellous knock of 73 and 76 balls, New Zealand are 118 for two. Jones down the ground. And he might have been a bit lucky that he hit it so hard because it went straight back over the top of Raju that, my word, it was travelling like a bullet and Raju didn't even have time to react to it. Raju has got a steady length. Jones down the pitch again, thumping the ball down to long off. Stand in your crease, Andrew Jones, that's four. 28 overs gone, 137 for two. Srinath bowling to Crow, who really has a bit of luck as he drags the ball from his gloves. He might get four, he does get four, but it came from his gloves. It really completely beat Kieran Moray. Well, they're not going to get one from there anyway. That's a huge hit from Martin Crow. That just raced across the turf to the boundary at the square leg. Raju, so slightly faster delivery and uh, 
Martin Crow well poised, uh, perfect timing to the deepest square leg boundary for four. There's Crow going over square leg again. That's six. Well, look at the win. Yes, that was a that was a loose delivery by Kapil. They were short and lifting. And Martin Crow had plenty of time to get behind it and smack it towards the mid wicket boundary for six. Crow in the air but safe, just over square leg. It should run away for four. It does. So Martin Crow another four, and my word, he's getting on with the job. And 162 for two. Oh, well done by Moray. Out. He's been he's out. Gone. He's gone. It he's hit the stumps. Out. I didn't realise it hit the stumps. What a slick piece of work by Moray. He dived away and reversed the ball, flicking it behind him, hitting the stumps, and Martin Crow was out of his crease. I didn't realise that it hit the stumps, but it certainly did. So, very good work by the keeper, Moray. Yes, he did well. Very well. Look at that. Oh. That's superb stuff by Moray. Crow out, and New Zealand 162 for three. And Ian Smith crashing it away through the covers. There's a sweeper out there. He might get to it. He may not, though. Oh, just got the foot out. And away he goes again. This is high. It could, could be caught. He it is. is caught. Yes, well. he's gone. And it's Amray out there. Hello. A parting word from Ian Smith. And but there's no question he's out. Caught in the deep, just forward of square, trying to hit it away. Got it a little too high. Picked it up all right in the middle of the bat, but it went very high and gone nicely played the should run away for four it does Banerjee back into the attack and Jones gets it through extra cover and that's his 50 his 23rd 50 in one day internationals for New Zealand Andrew Jones Rutherford gets a short ball which he plays beautifully that's in the gap that's four And quite a classy shot from Rutherford. There he goes through mid-wicket, and it's in the air, but it's quite safe. There's no one out there, and it's one bounce. Or is it going to be 60 to go over? Over the grass, into the ditch. Well, I thought for a moment, the way he played the shot, that he got it high on the bat, and it spooned it over mid-wicket. But it certainly kept on going, and Rutherford knew it, because he just stayed where he was. And it just carried into the ditch for six. In the air, hit over the top, and that's going to be another marvellous boundary for the hometown boy, Ken Rutherford. His second four, he's had one six already, and he's only made 16. He's going to be lucky as Ken Rutherford, getting it in the air but in the gap, and he gets four from a shot that he didn't really control, but the result's OK. And it moves up to 206, Rutherford on to 21. Ah! Rutherford gets a short ball, a big appeal, he's out! I think Rutherford thought it must have pitched outside leg, but umpire Ian Robinson had a long look, and then took his life in his hands and gave Ken Rutherford out in Carisbrook. Yes, it kept down on Rutherford, he got into a pulling position with the ball being short, and it didn't bounce, it pitched... And it certainly was hitting middle, it's just a question of whether it pitched outside leg, it perhaps pitched on leg stump, certainly knocking middle out, and Rutherford is out now, and New Zealand lose their fifth wicket at 2.06. And Andrew Jones standing up, crashing it through the extra cover field, that should run away, there's a fair bit of rubbish out there, but it makes its way through it, and four more. Chris Harris playing over the top of it. It gets through and hits the off stump. So another New Zealand wicket has fallen. 
It's probably too little, too late. Six runs needed for victory, but Prabaka has bowled him. Well, Chris Harris will be disappointed about this because he's looking for a nice little not out, but that was, uh, he yorked himself, really, didn't he? Yes, so you look to play through the leg side, perhaps. Uh, however, he's gone, 2-2-5 two, two, for six. And more runs here, just wide, a backward point. Won't quite run away, oh, yes, it will. Four runs. Well, the scores are tied. So Ian Robinson signals four. And one run needed for victory for New Zealand. Oh, he's hit it in the air, he could be out. He's dropped. Well, goodness gracious me, it's a chapter of accidents out there. Shrikant came in and he dived for a, a catch that seemed fairly straightforward and dropped it. So there seems to be a bit of confusion out there, but uh, Shrikant, he really misjudged that completely, Richard. Well, he did, and of course the breeze has dropped, so I don't think that's had anything to do with it either. But uh, really, that looked to be a dolly on the catch. But uh, Shrikant, well, oh. never got a glove on it. Oh, dear, oh me. Goodness gracious. However, so here we are, Shrikant. Now. And Andrew Jones, he's turned it away. New Zealand have won. One run, 231. Another great victory for New Zealand at Carisbrook this afternoon in cold and blustery conditions. New Zealand a comprehensive win. India probably out of the competition now. They'll be disappointed, but New Zealand roll on. From the first ball then of the 48th over, New Zealand getting home by four wickets and Mark Greatbatch did the job again. 73 from 76 deliveries and Andrew Jones, they're not out at the end, anchoring the run chase to victory for New Zealand. 67 not out. Useful contributions from Crow and Rutherford. A look at the Indian bowling figures. Well, Kapil Deb and Prabhaka got a bit of a hammering early on from Mark Greatbatch, but Prabhaka came back well to take three for 46. Raju, the left armour, bowled tidily. So did Srinath. And the other Indian bowlers not used that much at all. So New Zealand are six from six and still number one on that Benson and Hedges World Cup points table. Let's get the aftermatch comments now from the two captains, Mohamed Azruddin and Martin Crow. I, I felt that we did pretty well in the field and with our bowling um, in those conditions, 2.30. And of course I knew that India would struggle a little bit with uh, the coldness of the situation. So <laughs> I really thought if we capitalised on the first 15 overs uh, when we batted, and we got off to a good start, got some momentum going, then we were going to be okay. And Mark Greatbatch again has, has done the job brilliantly, hasn't he? Yeah, consistency again, you know, and that's, that's very important for this team to, uh, to learn from him. And he's, he's done it three out of four, is it? Um, and he just kept playing to his strengths. Uh, you know, it's great, and uh, I hope it continues. <laughs> As a, uh, I guess you'll be a bit uh, warmer under these lights, but uh, just give us briefly your thoughts on yeah, today's it was, match. Uh, it was very cold, you know, to start with, and uh, we really struggled while fielding. I thought we didn't field well and bowl well. And uh, when we we didn't score too many runs also because uh, we had a very we didn't get a good start but uh, I mean we couldn't capitalize on the last eight or seven overs I mean if we had got another sixty to seventy runs would have been a di different situation but that's how it goes. So two thirty you thought at lunchtime you might have been under a bit of pressure when you came out the field. Yeah, considering the ground you know it's it's too small on the boundary and uh, with a man like Paddy you know I mean he can really hit the ball you know over the top and uh, he just did the right thing and uh, he won the game. For them. All right, Mohamed Azruddin, thanks for talking Thank to you. us and uh, good luck for your last match against South Africa. Thanks. All right. New Zealand are in fine form. Their next match is against England at the Basin Reserve in Wellington at the weekend. Today, though, here at Carisbrook in Dunedin, New Zealand have been convincing winners over India by four wickets in the Benson and Hedges World Cup.